some notable quotes. The Son of God became a man to enable men to become the sons of God. Love has a name. Jesus. Love has a place. Our hearts. Love has a story. And it's not finished yet. God's gifts put our best dreams to shame. How many observe Christ's birthday? How few his precepts? Oh, it is easier to keep holidays than commandments. Benjamin Franklin. Somehow, not only for Christmas, but all the long year through, the joy that you give to others is the joy that comes back to you. Yeah. I'd like you to turn in your Bibles to Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2, we're going to begin with verse 8. Suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven, and the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told them. <clears throat> Throughout the history of Israel, being a shepherd was considered to be a noble profession. Abel was the first named in the Bible to have this job. And the others we know well are Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, and of course, David. Many stories are told about David during his time as a shepherd. I'm sure you'll remember the bear and the lion that he killed while he was watching the flock. But by the time we get to this period of time of Jesus' birth, being a shepherd is no longer considered to be a noble profession. In fact, shepherds are considered to be the lowest class of people. And it also says no help is to be given to the shepherds. Shepherds were considered to be unclean, and as a result of that, they were unable to attend any religious services. They were not allowed to go into the temple. They never stayed in one place for very long because they had to travel from place to place to take their flock to greener pastures. Living in the fields, away from the mainstream of society, 
made them unappealing to be around. Here we have the shepherds sitting on a hillside, keeping an eye on their sheep, considered to be poor, with not much hope of improving their lives. Life was hard, and life was harsh. And then it happened. One beautiful night, clear skies, stars are shining bright. The angel appeared and stood before the shepherds. And the glory of the Lord shone around them. In Exodus chapter 24, verse 17, it says this. <clears throat> the sight of the glory of the Lord was like a consuming fire. And in 1 Kings 8, verse 11, describes the glory of God like this. So that the priests could not continue ministering because of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. So when you think of the shepherds, and you, you see where it says that the glory of the Lord shone around them, you think of that all-consuming power, that all-consuming fire. And I think of that cloud which penetrates even the smallest cracks. It gets in and reaches every aspect of our lives. That's the presence of God that these shepherds experienced. They knew they had been in the very presence of God. They experienced the glory of God. But because they hadn't experienced that feeling before, they really didn't know what it was all about. <coughs> they honestly didn't know what to think. They were greatly afraid. One minute the shepherds were talking on the hillside. The next minute the hillside was lit up with the glory of God as a bright light. That light lit up the whole area around them. Imagine for a moment, if you would, how you would feel if you're sitting alone in a, in a spot or maybe you're conversing with a friend and then all of a sudden the area that you're in is lit up brightly. Okay. The, the reaction to all of this by the shepherds was really predictable. Thank you. Depending on what translation of the Bible you read, it would be abject terror. <laughs> Terrified. <laughs> sore afraid are filled with a great fear. These shepherds were afraid because something had just happened to them that hadn't happened to anyone ever before or would never happen again in the same manner. God looks down on these shepherds and sees how scared they are and delivers a message so, so typical of the God that we serve. A message that you will see throughout the Bible. Simply this. Don't be afraid. Amen. Don't be afraid. And I couldn't help but think of the phrase back in the 70s that went like this. Don't worry. Be happy. Amen. My God is always speaking words of encouragement into our lives. My God cares about every aspect of your life. And he wants every aspect of him to creep in like that cloud into every corner and every dark spot into your life. He said, don't be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. You see, God didn't leave anyone else. 
I know you've heard the question asked, why shepherds? Why did God choose those shepherds to announce the birth of his son Jesus? There in Bethlehem was born the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. No other announcements was given out. Why not someone with status? Why not someone who had their life together? Somehow when I hear that God chose shepherd, it lets me know that no matter who you are, God loves you. No matter who you are, God cares about you. God doesn't love you for who you're going to be, but who you are right now. There's many examples of that very concept in the Bible. Luke talks of Zacchaeus, a tax collector. They didn't like tax collectors back then any more than what we like tax collectors today. He reached out to the prostitutes. He reached out to the demon-possessed. He reached out to strangers. He reached out to the undesirables. And as I think about life right here in this community that we live in, as you walk down the streets, you can face each type of person that God reached out to. It's represented here in the scripture. But we often forget that he also reached out to the well-to-do. He also reached out to the rulers. In other words, it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you are. This message of God's love is for you. We should turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26. For you see your calling, brethren, that you many, that not many wise, according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. <clears throat> and God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty and the base things of the world and the things which are despised. God has chosen. And the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are. Somehow, somehow the shepherds were expecting this. And when they saw that bright light, they knew it meant something <coughs> special. Something special was going on. They knew it meant that they had to take some action here. They thought of the things that they had learned, and they were ready to make a journey. Luke chapter 2, verse 15, so it was, when the angels had gone away from them into heaven, that the shepherds said to one another, let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. This message that they heard required action. They knew that they were going to have to do something about it. And that was they were going to have to take a journey. I like the fact that these shepherds were excited. Maybe the fear was gone, maybe not. Maybe that fear now has turned to anticipation of what's going to happen on this journey. They didn't know quite where they were going. Yes, they knew they were going to Bethlehem. And now they knew they needed to go and see this thing. Could it happen? They didn't say, let's go to Bethlehem and see if this is really true. They didn't question the message. 
They didn't question the announcement by the angels. They didn't sit around saying that none of this could be real or none of this really made sense to them. No, they got up. Instantly, they got up and headed towards Bethlehem. They headed out on a journey, a journey of faith, anxious to see what God had for them. And I liken that here to you and I on the journey that I so often talk about, anxious to see what God has for our lives, anxious to see where, as we travel this path in life, where God's going to take us. This whole story of Christmas is a journey of faith. After all, there's a whole lot that just can't be explained. For instance, you can't explain the virgin birth. It really made no sense. You can't explain the heavens lighting up like it did. You can't explain the angels announcing the birth of a king. And you can't explain all the drama surrounding this event. It can only be understood with a heart and a mind of faith. It can only be understood as you turn your eyes to the creator, the ruler, the ruler of this universe. Before Christmas will ever be real to us, our journey must also be a journey of faith. We must realize that we will never completely understand the wonder of God's love. But in faith, we must be ready to accept it. Think about the shepherds. Think about the shepherds when they said, let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass. That was a major decision for them. Just as you and I have faced major decisions in our life, this decision to travel to Bethlehem was a major decision. Think of what they had to face here. When they went to Bethlehem, they had to leave their flock. Everything they owned was wrapped up in those sheep. It was at night time. And these shepherds had to be extra vigilant, vigilant during the night. It's a time when wolves might come out. Time when the bears, the lions might come out and attack the flock. So it took faith for them to get out and to move on down the road towards Bethlehem. They had to say, we'll leave everything behind to seek this King of Kings. We're going to put everything, we're going to put our, our way of life behind us as we travel on to seek and to find the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Have you ever thought that when they came back to their flock, were they expecting any sheep to still be there? Maybe they were wondering if everything was going to be okay. In fact, I believe that God would have blessed and prospered them because of their faith. Because of their willingness to step out into this journey with faith, knowing that God had spoke to their hearts to go. Knowing that God had given them direction. The shepherds, they took action when they were told of the birth of Jesus. First they went, and second they spread the good news. 
They were so excited about what had happened to them, they began talking about it. They began sharing it with everyone that they came in contact with. They went and spread the good news. Verse 18, And all there who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. I believe the excitement was so real in their lives, it didn't matter who they came in contact with, they were letting people know about it. They would tell them, hey, have you heard? You and I need to spread the good news. We need to go and tell. I think of the school when you have show and tell. We can go and tell and we can also show because of what God has done in your life. As I stated last week, we have a room full of miracles sitting right here this morning. I believe that without a shadow of a doubt. You have something to tell. You have a message that's exciting to spread around, to let people know what's going on in your life. Do you have a hard time relating to people like the shepherds? Because in God's eyes, we're all the same. Here, the message is this. To you, a Savior is born. Christ the Lord. <clears throat> what we do with that message makes all the difference in the world. And if you haven't asked Jesus to come into your hearts, you can do that right now. In fact, I'm not going to ask you to bow your heads. I'd like you to repeat this prayer with me. Dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Make me a new creation. In you. And I believe that when you pray that prayer and you truly ask Christ to come into your heart, to rule and to reign in your life, you have become a new creation in Christ. And that's what this whole Christmas story is all about. Becoming new. Becoming a new creation in Jesus Christ. So much. So much to hear. So much to tell. Would you just bow your heads with me? Heavenly Father, you're such an awesome God. And God, as we're here this morning, I pray that each one that's here feels the excitement of this message of the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ. And Lord, that they want to take that message just as the shepherds did. Go and tell what you've done in our lives. And I thank you for that, Lord. God, it's so exciting. So exciting. Amen.